I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This is a very special uh, piece that we have, um, this Mason and Hamlin. If you're not familiar with uh, uh, the piano industry, if you are familiar with the piano industry, you know very well the, the history of Mason and Hamlin, that, uh, that, how outstanding it is. If you're not familiar, then uh, briefly, uh, everyone, even, even non-piano people, have heard the name Steinway. Well, Mason and Hamlin is one of those uh, one of those companies that really could have had the reputation that Steinway enjoys from a quality standpoint, but because of lack of marketing, lack of luck, I suppose, um, they they didn't uh, uh, kind of edge into uh, the. Um, the world stage in the same way that Steinway did. They are on the world stage, but just not nearly to the same extent that, that Steinway did. And Steinway, of course, became a, a, a household name. And for piano people, Mason and Hamlin is absolutely a, a household name. But for non-piano people, it's, it's not, even though it deserves it. Um, OK, manufactured in, in uh, Boston. And they, they still have a factory there today. Um, just outside of Boston, still manufacturing very, very high-end pianos. These are pianos that uh, that today uh, sell for, um, depending on the depending on the model, fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Very, very expensive. Very high-end pianos. Everybody knows the name Mason and Hamlin, and everybody respects and reveres um, the name Mason and Hamlin. Except the Simon people. People they don't like Mason and Hamlin. Um, and, and something that, something that uh, I find kind of amusing, uh, Mason and Hamlin people uh, today say uh, something to the effect of, I can't remember the exact words, uh, that, uh, because there's, there's a real kind of Coke versus Pepsi, uh, Nike versus Reebok or whatever you want to say, rivalry between Steinway, Mason and Hamlin. Um, and what Mason and Hamlin people say is, Steinway has the name, we have the quality. Um, you know, I'm neutral on this, but I find it amusing. I enjoy watching it from afar. Um, but as a piano rebuilder, uh, what I, I do enjoy building, re rebuilding a piano like this that, uh, you know, people, people ask me, how good is my Vos? Or how good is Bush and Lane? Or how good is Kanabi? Uh, out of 10, one out of 10. And I'll say, well, that's, you know, in its day, it was probably a seven or it was probably an eight. Well, Mason and Hamlin, as well as Steinway, I would give a 10. These are, these are tens on that, on that one through 10 scale. So, uh, last thing that I'll say about, about Mason, Hamlin, um, and Steinway uh, in general, before I talk about this one in particular, is that uh, um, piano rebuilders, are, are, they, they always are on the lookout for one of two names in order to, to rebuild, because when they rebuild them, they, they fetch a very high price from, from people that, you know, from piano people. They're always on the lookout for Steinway because that name fetches a high price when they rebuild it. And the other one um, that they're always on the lookout for, um, it doesn't fetch the same quite quite the same high price, but it, it definitely is a pleasure to rebuild. And and among people that are in the know, they know that that it is a super super high quality piano. They're always on the lookout for Mason and Hamlin's. So um, there there you have it. Okay. This particular piano we rebuilt probably three years ago, and we made the mistake of not refinishing it. Um, so we've had we've actually had it totally rebuilt, uh, and and by totally rebuilt I'm referring to new strings, new tuning pins, new action parts, new hammers, new dampers, um, bushings, uh, keys, all all of these all of these parts, and of course. The, the pedals and all of the corresponding trap work on the inside and the other side of the that, that make the pedals function, all of that is completely rebuilt. So this piano, even though this particular one is manufactured in 1892, so 100 and, uh, 130 years almost, 125 years ago when it was originally manufactured, um, for all intents and purposes on the inside, it's brand new. Um, so we put it on our on our showroom floor here three years ago after we finished rebuilding it. Um, and I think I think people just were, were blind to 
try it. Even though we, we over the years, those three years, we have had a lot of people that say, wow, this piano sounds amazing. But the reason I think that it, that it hasn't sold, uh, that it hasn't found a home, is because it was to basically totally raw, um, 120, 125 year old piano, um, cosmetically. So we just decided, we just uh, barely, what, like a couple weeks ago, decided, okay, okay, the problem, the reason this piano isn't, isn't uh, finding a home is definitely because of the finish. And so now it's refinished. It's in perfect, beautiful condition cosmetically now to match the perfect condition of the inside. And so, and so now we're, we're, we're putting, it, uh, putting it back on the showroom floor um, as of today. Okay, so let's let's get a shot of the inside. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, all new strings, all new tuning pins, um, new dampers, new hammers, and these are these are Abel hammers, which is a which is a high end high end hammer. Um, new bridle straps, new shanks, new bushings, and then the keys um, in here. All of these are have been. Have been redone, so they're in beautiful condition. So, uh, yeah, and everything, everything functioning perfectly. Something, uh, something that you don't always know is when you when you rebuild a piano, you don't always know totally how it's going to turn out. Well, this one turned out amazing. Well, okay, listen to this. I hope this comes through okay on the video. Beautiful, big, rich tone. Power, powerful bass. Love that sound. And a really nice responsive action too. So, um, this is why this is why I say this piano is a 10 and it still is to this day this is a 10 even when you even if you were to compare this to a brand new piano a brand new um, uh, Hyloon or Petroff or, or any of these Yamaha whatever this piano is going to be a 10 still to this day no question here in Orem, Utah, totally rebuilding this, this piano, making it sound that good. Although we did have a pretty awesome skeleton to start with, pretty awesome design. Uh, these guys in 1892, they absolutely were at the top of their game. They knew what they were doing, like they do still today. Um, okay, please come uh, come check it out. See what see what you think. The address here is 1497 South State Street in Orem. And by the way, shipping, we've shipped pianos all over the country. And actually, we just shipped one to Japan. We actually rebuilt a piano that, that I found with my wife in France, in Paris, that, that fell in love with. We shipped it here, um, rebuilt that one. It was a 19, 1902, 1901 Erard. Totally rebuilt that, shipped one, that, that one to, to Japan. Um, pretty cool. So shipping not only all over the country is not a, not a problem, but, but if you're out of the country, we can ship this one to you as well. And this, this one, like the Erard, is a special instrument that would merit shipping out of the, out of the country um, as well. So 
it's it's actually more reasonably priced than than you would expect to uh, to ship such a, a large object. Um, okay, check it out. See what you think. Thanks for watching.